Sink. Oh, it's cracking morning, isn't it? It's beautiful. It is, it's nice. Nice and warm. Okay, so what we're going to do today, we're going to set some marigold seeds that we're going to grow on in the greenhouse, and they're actually for in the greenhouse. They're a beneficial plant um, in lots of ways, really, uh, especially if you're growing them around tomatoes and that sort of thing. Um, the thing about them is that they attract pollinators, um, which is a good thing, but also they attract things like uh, wasps and hoverflies, and, and they'll eat um, aphids and white fly and that sort of thing. The scent of the marigold as well puts some of the pests off um, and it'll deter them from even coming into your greenhouse. Um, and the other thing about them is they're a bit of a sacrificial plant because slugs and snails love them. So they'll tend to eat these rather than eat your, the, the other crops in your garden. So there's lots of benefits from growing flowers in your greenhouse with your tomatoes, cucumbers, etc. Um, but we've got three different varieties. Um, we've got a lemon gem, naughty marietta, and red cherry. So they're all, as you can see, all completely different. They'll have the same scent, um, probably the same growing habit, um, and we'll treat them exactly the same. So I'm going to set these in little recycled mushroom trays. Um, just use a good quality peat-free compost. Don't have to be too fussy with them. They're quite robust little uh, seeds and plants. Um, so we'll do the red cherry first. So a decent layer of compost in your tray. You don't need too much, sort of two inches, um, which is plenty. And the seeds are a reasonable size and they're all the same sort of shape. Let's see if I can get in this. There we go. Um, so they tend to be sort of two coloured they have like a like a they're all they look a bit like a dart or a, a shuttlecock they've got like a, a white plume on the end and then that's the actual seed there and that's that's what was part of the flower um so all you do is just take them in your hand and you can just from a sort of five or six inches high just sprinkle them onto the surface of your compost so as i say don't set them too close together you can spread them out and only set what you need really um, don't don't think you've got to use the whole packet what I grow I tend to to try and force into my garden somewhere anyway yeah <laughs> she warn like them in yeah um, so as you can see I've spread those out quite evenly yeah. there's plenty of room for the, the small seedlings to appear and develop and the thing about marigolds is the reason we can set them like this is they don't mind being pricked out they don't mind being disturbed um, some plants don't particularly like that um, but these are they're pretty good for, you know, being pricked out. They're, they're quite robust little plants, uh, easy to grow. Um, so if you've got if you've got kiddies, they're really good for kids to grow. Get them into gardening by growing these, because you really you, you can't you almost can't fail with them. So we'll just pop those away. So these we're just going to slightly cover with compost. You don't need to cover them a lot. So I'm just going to make sure the seeds are in contact with the compost, and then. Just a thin layer over the top. You just want the seeds to sort of to disappear from view. You don't need to be too deep. And you've laid them flat. You're not so sort of, the temptation is because they look like a dart is to stick them in. But no, just lay them flat. They'll, they'll come. They'll grow. And then, as I say, just a, a little covering of compost. Just tap them down. And again, firm them. And all you need to do with that is label it. So pop a label in, give them a water, and then what I'll do is, once I've watered them, I'll stick them in a clear plastic bag and just stick those onto a, a bright windowsill. You don't need to put them on, the, on a heat tray or anything like that, they'll, they'll germinate quite readily. But this time of year, they'd even germinate in the greenhouse because it's quite warm in here today. Um, but it's overnight, um, that you need to, you'd have to protect them. But stick them on a, a warm windowsill and they'll germinate. It says sort of two to three weeks, but I've set some recently and they were, they were through in three days mm. so you know it, it just depends on where you've got them and um, the conditions so yeah. it's obviously been good conditions this weekend it's been a quite a bright weekend warm mm. so they've come through pretty quick 
So the other, other um, marigolds, just set them exactly the same, same process, yeah. exactly the same. Just check your instructions on the back. It tell, there's loads of information on the back, tells you what months to set them in, when to plant them out. It's about perfect time to set. Yeah, yeah, you want you want them to be a robust plant when you put them out because, as I say, slugs and snails love them. So if yeah. you've got a, a, a small plant and you put that out, they'll just eat the whole lot and they'll right. be gone. If you've got a, a strong, established plant, plant, they'll take a bit of, of an attack from a yeah. slug or a snail. Um, so, you know, you, they're not going to eat everything all at once. Because, I mean, I've seen gardens where people have planted them out and they're only small and then you go the next yeah, day and they've all gone yeah. <laughs> and they wonder where they've gone it's, well, it's like that snails. big leaf we saw last year isn't it where yeah it, yeah it, it munched at it where it didn't uh, yeah it, it, it didn't, didn't take it all yeah it resisted it, it yeah. yeah it couldn't eat the whole thing so i think that was a squash plant or yeah. something. Yeah. but yeah if you get it established the slugs and snails will have a go at them but they'll not kill them yeah. just to make sure we're still going So the other thing we're going to set, another beneficial plant for your garden, um, is nasturtium. Now this is a variety called peach melba, um, and I'm going to treat these slightly different. Because they're quite a big seed, and they don't particularly respond to being disturbed once, this, once they're growing, um, I'm going to set these in modules so that uh, we don't have to disturb them. All we'll do is pot them out the module and straight into another pot, ready for going outside. So this is um, sort of a, a homemade propagator. Now, I think this had donuts or something in it. So I've got a, a bought tray and a bought modular tray. You can use like little yogurt pots or anything you want really, yeah. toilet rolls, whatever you want to use. Um, but I just got this one spare, so that's what I'm going to use today. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, perfect. Yeah, you just need to make sure you've got drainage, drainage in both. All you have to be careful of is if you're putting it inside on a windowsill, that you get one of these that's not got drainage in, ah, right, okay. but these have. Yes. your modules have yes. so that any water excess water will drain into your tray and it won't go out onto your windowsill and down your wall yeah. Yeah. so you just have to be careful whereas we're going to keep them in here they're going to stay in here yeah these are no so that's that so i'm just going to pop some peat free compost in just fill each module There's no need to firm it down it's because it's, it's quite a fine compost it's for setting seeds so all you need to do then is just tap it and you'll see it can just sink a little bit and that's exactly what you need so the nasturtium seeds quite a bulky seed so as you can see as i say this one's called peach melba which is quite a nice variety by the looks of it I've not grown these before so something new and what i'm going to do is just for now i'm just going to lay a seed in the centre of each module. They're really easy to handle because of the size of them. I'm just going to double check out the depth that they should be set at. So I've got a couple of three spare there. So just in case any of these don't come, we can always replant them. Each, yeah. yeah, you only need one in each. Um, if you want, you can put two in each and just pull out the one that's the weakest, weakest plant. But yeah. I think with the seed this side size. Um, just plant one in, one in each, you know. Uh, hopefully they'll all come. But if they don't, like I say, I've got three or four that I can replant. Yeah. If they don't come, don't just pop it straight into the same compost because it'll be wet and soggy. Mm. Um, just replace that little bit of compost and then put a new seed in. Um, obviously, when, when the seeds start growing, they'll take up moisture from the compost. If the seed doesn't grow, it just stays wet mm. uh, and it can harbour diseases and, and things. So you're better off to empty that mod that module out and refill it with fresh compost yeah, yeah. so it says to uh, cover the seedlings with half an inch or one and a half centimeters of compost so all I'm going to do I'm just going to slightly push those in just one and a half centimeters approximately so you're making good contact contact with the compost anyway because you're pushing the seed into the compost mm. You no need to be exact, don't don't lose any sleep about it. And then all you're gonna do then is just throw some compost over the top, level it over, and then just check it to settle it, and then just wipe any excess off, and that's that done. So all you need to do then is label it, again give it a watering, and then pop your top top on, and that again. You, I say if you've got a tray that's not got 
drainage in, yeah. pop it on a warm windowsill. I'm going to leave this in, in here because yeah. uh, the greenhouse is warming up nicely now and they should germinate. Um, on, again, on here it says 14 to 21 days. Again, they might be through in a week. Mm. It's, it's just conditions. Mm. But um, again, these have the same benefits as your marigolds. They attract pollinators. Um, they attract hoverflies. There's loads and um, varieties and of other flies. Don't be worried if you get wasps, because other than if a wasp makes a nest in your greenhouse, they're quite beneficial to eat the pest. They do pollinate as well. Mm. So, you know, everybody says, well, what do, what's the purpose of a wasp? Yeah. They, they do have a purpose. They, they, do, they do predate bugs. The, the other bonus with both of these, actually, is that you can eat the flowers. Oh, right. So you can eat the petals. Uh, yeah. yeah. But uh, obviously, just make sure you double check um, on your packets and everything before yeah. yeah before you actually do yeah. uh, it's always best to check but yeah marigolds you can eat you know, because you see it on like master chef oh, yeah, put little petals yeah, yeah yeah and i think nasturtians as well again check but i think you can eat the leaves right. um but just check which variety you've got and you know just just to some research first Different. the thing about nasturtians as well is they'll either climb or they'll trail so if you want to okay. Put them on a fence so they trail down or um, put them up a trellis they will they'll do both yeah. um, they are quite vigorous they do attract black fly uh, and other pests but what you want is for the black fly and the pest to be attracted to these and not your veg that you're going to eat that's the, that's the whole idea that you use these to to, to draw the pests away from the yeah. stuff you want to eat um, i think the idea is that they're going to go n down near the um squash plants in the garden because yeah, yeah. this year we're going to plant a lot more flowers yeah. to attract pollinators just yeah. to give them a, a help um because we've got tended to concentrate on veg yes. uh, yeah. um, so we're going to do even more to get help to the, for the pollinators mm -hmm. um so yeah. the other thing about flowers that you you grow as well try and grow flowers that are single sure. by that i mean that they're an open that the flowers are open so that the insects can get to them to pollinate oh, them okay. But certain types of marigolds are like double or pompon. They're more difficult for uh, pollinators to to get the food from. Yeah, so yeah. Um, yeah, if you can try and try and grow, single, yeah, yeah, a single a single variety um, or a mixture. You yeah, know, if you, obviously, yeah. I'm not saying don't ever grow a double yeah. flower. Yeah, for display or, you could have yeah, a mixture of both. But, but try and easily, get yeah. some single flowers in there as well, like balance, daisies and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, yeah, just to help the, the pollinators. Alright, spot on though, thank you.